Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Intel Core i7 4820K Ivy Bridge E processor from Intel's Extreme lineup. This is the smallest model of the lineup and costs a little bit less than the i7 4770K of the mainstream lineup. Again, we're looking at an Intel Core i7 processor, the i7 4820K to be exact, which only fits into the LJ2011 socket. On the side of the box are some basic specifications and these extreme processors don't come with any integrated graphics. On the back you can see the CPU itself inside the box, which we will now open to see what's included. For the box design there's a cover on top here. As always the Intel Core i7 installation instructions with a new haswell like sticker on the back. And because this is an Intel Extreme processor, Intel assumes you're an Extreme user or basically more of an enthusiast and therefore doesn't include a stock cooler. You'll probably use an aftermarket cooler anyways. In this cardboard packaging is the CPU itself and the plastic case. It's time to open that case up so we can take a close look at the CPU. Here it is now, the Intel Core i7 4820K Ivy Bridge eCPU. As you can see, it's quite big compared to most other CPUs I've tested so far. That's because this CPU only fits into the large LJ2011 Intel Extreme socket. But keep in mind, the size is not always an indicator for performance. But let's take a look at the specifications now. The Intel Core i7 4820K is a quad-core Ivy Bridge E CPU that only fits into the LJ2011 socket. The CPU has 4 cores and 8 threads, thanks to the hyper-threading technology. The base clock is at 3.7 GHz and the turbo at 3.9 GHz. This processor has a TDP of 130 watts and uses the 22 nanometer architecture. There's 1 MB of level 2 cache and 10 MB of level 3 cache. As for memory, this CPU supports quad-channel memory and supports speeds of DDR3-1866 natively. For this test I'll be using the Gigabyte GA X79 UP4 motherboard. This is an LJ2011 socket board featuring the X79 chipset. For Ivy Bridge E, Intel didn't release a new chipset, so the same X79 chipset is still used even for the newer Ivy Bridge E CPUs. Please be very careful though, since these X79 motherboards were launched together with the older Intel Sandy Bridge E CPUs. The chance of an older BIOS version installed on the board is very high. And this was the case here. So in order to get Ivy Bridge E to work, you'll at first have to install a Sandy Bridge E processor to update the BIOS that supports Ivy Bridge E. Sadly, I had to buy myself an older Sandy Bridge E CPU then, which would be the i7-3820. In CPU Z, you can see the specs again. One thing that always bothers me with these extreme processors is that these are always a generation back when it comes to the architecture. Therefore, you don't get these extra Haswell instructions here or the much more advanced chipset for USB 3.0 and SATA 6 gigabit per second. Since this is a KCR CPU, you'll be able to overclock freely by just simply increasing the multiplier and the voltage if needed. As for memory, I have 16GB of RAM installed that is running in quad channel. So instead of dual channel on the mainstream lineup, you get support for quad channel here and therefore more RAM capacities. But enough talking, let's move on to the benchmarks and see how well this i7-4820K performs.
So there you have it. The Intel Core i7 4820K Ivy Bridge E processor definitely is a very good processor overall. It's priced a bit lower than the i7 4770K of the mainstream lineup. However, in many cases the 4820K even performs a little bit worse than the 4770K. But then there are also cases where the 4820K beats the 4770K by quite a lot. The temperatures are super low on this 4820K and therefore overclocking is a dream with this CPU. I've tried overclocking to 4.7 GHz and it was easy to achieve. The power consumption on idle is higher than the one of the 4770K and the same thing on full load. In the end I'd say the 4820K and 4770K are quite similar processors. Compared to the previous generation Sandy Bridge E i7-3820, the 4820K improved pretty much everywhere. So who should actually go for the i7-4820K instead of the 4770K? Well, people that can spend a bit more money on the motherboard, because these X79 boards are more expensive than the Z87 ones. And if you can't spend that much money for the i7-4930K or 4960X, the 4820K is pretty much equal to the i7-4770K at stock. But to squeeze out more performance, which you pretty much have to do when already spending more money on the motherboard, you simply overclock it. Alright, now you might say, hey, but I can also overclock the 4770K. Well, you're right, but the benefit with this 4820K is that Intel didn't use their cheap thermal paste under the IHS. Instead, they used solder, which carries heat away faster. Therefore, you can overclock much higher by still maintaining lower temperatures than you would do with an overclocked i7-4770K. Another benefit of these Intel Extreme processors would be the support for quad channel memory, if that's what you need. Pros are great price performance ratio, great performance, then the CPU is very easy to overclock, runs at super low temperatures, has good power consumption on full load, especially when overclocked, and last but not least, this processor also supports quad channel and high frequency memory. As for the cons, I can only say, for my personal taste, the power consumption on idle is a little bit too high. But when you overclock, the idle consumption doesn't really grow and therefore this 4820K gets more efficient when you overclock it. This Intel i7-4820K definitely deserves a 9 out of 10 and I would definitely recommend this CPU. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit nicholas11xhelftechx.com to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.